since the difference approaches to probability involves the counting of elements in the events and the sample space, it will be useful to introduce some techniques that facilitate the counting of the elements in some cases that are usually found in problems related to probability. We call these techniques principles of counting, and this video deals with some of them. The first one will be the so-called multiplication formula or multiplication rule. It says like that, if two disjoint events A and B can occur respectively of M and M different ways, then the number of ways these events can occur simultaneously is M times N. So we multiply the number of ways the first event can happen times the number of ways the second event can happen. If the disjoint events are three and can occur respectively of M, N, and P different ways, then the number of ways these events can occur simultaneously it will be the multiplication of the product of these two, three numbers. And if you have four events, when, then we multiply the number of, of times each of these events can happen, and so on. For example, assume that the cost of the product that a store sells has a number first and then a letter. How many different codes are possible? So we know that the number that is at the beginning can occur of 10 different ways. So the 10 different digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the letters, if we use the English alphabet, it can happen of 26 ways. So, the number of codes that can occur will be m n, so the, the product of m times n, so it will be 10 times 26, and this is 260, so we will have 260. And if we have a code that have two numbers and one letter, for example, then we multiply 10 times 10 times 26, etc. Let's solve another example. How many outcomes are there when rolling three dice? We know that when rolling a die, we have six possible outcomes. So there are six ways that this die can, can land at the end. So the number of different outcomes from the first, second, and third die will be six. And the total number of outcomes will be six times six times six, obviously 216. Another example, how many outcomes are there when tossing four coins? So, and we know that each time that I toss a coin, there are two possible outcomes. If we toss four coins, the total number of outcomes will be two times two times two times two equals 16. So the principle of counting, this principle of counting is very easy. The multiplication will have as many factors as the numbers of events we have. Another principle of counting is the cold permutation formula. If we want to find the number of arrangement of R objects selected from a group of N possible objects, then we some symbolize this by NPR, and we call this permutation. So these arrangements are called permutations. And this number of this arrangement, the number of this arrangement is given by this formula. NPR, so the number of permutation of R objects selected from a group of N elements, it will be N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. This n factorial is the multiplication of n times the times the whole numbers that are the positive the positive whole numbers below this n. So n factorial will be equal n times n minus one times n minus two times two etc until one. For example. One factorial will be just one. It's a multiplication of only one factor. So remember, we're going to multiply the number times all, each, all of the whole numbers below it. 
For example, two factorial will be two times one equal two. Or three factorial will be three times two times one. Three times two times one equals six. A four factorial will be four times three times two times one. This is 24. Or five factorial will be five times four times three times two times one, 120. Or six factorial will be six times five times four times three times two times one, etc. So on so on. So a, any time we want to compute the factorial of a number is the number multiplied by all the numbers, the whole numbers below it. And we are considering only positive whole number. There is a definition for the zero factorial, and the zero factorial will be one. Okay, so that defines a factorial for, for each positive whole number and for the factorial of zero. And this is the one that we are going to be using in the formula when I say n factorial. For example, imagine that we want to compute the arrangements. We want to count the total number of arrangements. And this arrangement without repetition. So the arrangement in a permutation formula will be always without repetitions of two letters that can be made with the letters A, B, C, D. So this is the problem. Find the number of arrangement without repetition of two letters that can be made with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And any time that I want to be using this formula, this formula will be used taking into account that the, the, there are no repetitions of the element. For example, there is no something like AA A or BB, no, no repetition. So this formula works when the arrangements are without repetition. We have eight letters, and we are going to choose two letters. That's what we are going to do here. Choose two letters from a group of eight letters. So we are going to make, make in permutation from A elements, and the permutations are, will have two elements. So N will be eight, and R will be two. If we don't know this formula, oh, then I need to count all the permutation, all the arrangement of two letters taken from here. So for example, and without repetition, for example, AB will be one arrangement. Huh? So AB will be one, and BA will be another, and maybe AC will be another, uh, CA another, AD. So counting this will be too long. Huh? It will be AB, BA, BC, CB. A, C, C, A, A, D, D, A. So it will be better to use a formula. So if I use the formula, what we need to do is just A, P, 2. So we're going to get permutation of two elements taken from a group of eight. So using the formula, N will be eight, A minus two. So eight minus two, R is two. A minus two will be six. So that's why we are, we are going to compute a factorial over 6 factorial. And what is a factorial? A factorial is just the product 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, etc. And the 6 factorial will be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If we compute this by hand, we notice that there is a lot of cancellation. From the 6 factorial, actually. So from 6 factorial, cancel everything that is happening here. And the answer is just 8 times 7. 8 times 7 equals 56. That could be long in some cases, but not all the cases, because in the most of the time, there are a lot of cancellation. However, there is a, always in each calculator, scientific or financial calculator, they have if, uh, a key for this for this function, the permutation, for the permutations. And you see this in the BI2 plus, for example. If you want to compute this problem, what you need to do is just press number 8 and then the, use the key permutation that will be, as I told you, one for in each scientific or a financial calculator. So then look, in the, in the BA2 plus from Texas Instrument, the key is in the minus signs. And you need to use a second function first. So press second function key and then NPR, that is the 
is the same the same key for the minus sign for the subtraction and then the other number the two so if you're going to make a permutation of two elements taken from eight a elements okay will be just a second function npr2 and then press the equal if you press the equal it will happen they give you the answer 56 so so actually it's counting will be easy using the calculator this is a permutation and the permutations arrangements what is important is the order so the order is important a, so we are counting how many orders actually a b and b a have the same elements yes or not they are the same elements but they have different order for that reason they are different permutations or they are different arrangements when the order is not important when a b and b a is the same we don't say that we are counting permutation we say that we are counting combinations and this and this will be our last principle in this video the number of sex of r objects and now i say no arrangement i just say sex of r objects selected from a group of n possible objects it symbolizes ncr we call it combinations or sometimes people symbolize in this way c and the n at the top and r at the bottom and is given by the formula c n r equal n factorial divided by r factorial and multiply by n minus r factorial so it's a very similar formula but look at this you have this r factorial here and this makes the answer different the number of combination will be always smaller than the number of permutations and the reason is because you have an additional factor at the denominator let's make an example find the number of combination of two letters that can be made with the letters a b c d e e f g h so we are doing the same problem that we did it before but now we are counting just combinations if we are counting combination without using the formula okay we need to do this yes a b will be one combination the other will be a c now b a no because b a is the same a b because a b as a combination is the same of a, b a and then we have a c and we have a d and we have b c whatever so, so a d etc d e etc but anytime that i count a b i don't going to count b a and you notice obviously in this case we're going to have less com less elements in the in the number of combinations yeah okay let's see if we use the formula better yeah if we use the formula now there are eight objects and we are going to take two but i'm going to count in the combination so we're going to do this six two six a two and if i use the formula it will be a factorial so n is a r is 2 so will be 2 factorial at the bottom multiplied by n minus r so will be a minus 2 a minus 2 6 factorial okay so it, it, it means that that will be a times 7 times 6 times 5 etc until 1 the 2 factorial will be 2 times 1 the 6 factorial will be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and again will be a lot of 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 cancellation here five fives until from the six factorial everything cancel yeah so we will have now a times sevens at the top and at the bottom we have two times one yeah? two times one obviously this i don't need to type one but it will be a times seven divided by two or you can divide a times two four times seven twenty eight so it will be twenty eight the number of combinations if we want to do that in a calculator of course we can do it because it, almost every calculator has a key for that and we have something like this we'll in for example in the ba2 plus we have that we take again the first the first number eight 
and then the key NCR. Now the key NCR will be the same key for the plus signs. So, and you need to press the second function first. Second function NCR. You see the NCR is in yellow here. So you need to press second function first. And then the other number is 2. If you do that and press the equal signs, the calculator immediately shows you the answer. 28. So that's what you need to do to compute in the calculator. So it will be, again, an easy thing to do, counting combinations, especially if we have a calculator at hand. Another possible problem could be this. Ten doctors work at a medical clinic. The plan is to staff Saturday with three doctors. How many different combinations of three doctors can be scheduled? Because so we are going to take three doctors every Saturday from the group of 10. And obviously here the order is not important. We'll be three doctors. We'll be a set of three doctors. It's not like, like when you use symbols, A, B, C, the order is important. Because if you, if you say A, B, you say something different than if you say B, A. The number, for example, if you type... 1, 2, it will be number 12, and number 2, 1 will be 21. So here, if you use symbols, the order is important. But if you are using people, most of the time the order is not important. At least, for example, if you choose one doctor to be the president, the other will be the second doctor will be the, the secretary or whatever. So if, if you put an, an additional order in the problem, okay, in this case you use permutation. But most of the cases, you will be counting combination if you are counting people. Yeah? So how many combinations, how many sets of three doctors can, can be choose from a group of 10 doctors? It's a number of combinations. So it will be C103. Or 10, put the 10 at the beginning. So in, 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 in many textbooks, this is the... This is the the, the symbol for the combinations. Okay, so it will be C103 equal 10 factorial over 3 factorial times 7 factorial. So remember, the first number factorial at the top, the second number factorial at the bottom, and then 10 minus 3. So N minus R here will be 7 factorial. So the, if you do the if you do it by hand, okay, it will be long. Yeah, but if you use your if you use your calculator, it will be just typing first ten, then type the NCR key that is second function NCR, then the number three, the second one, three, and that gives you equal one hundred twenty. So it means that this the number of possible combination that you can obtain from these ten doctors, if you are choosing three of the three at the, at the time will be 120. So you will only spend 120 Saturdays without repeating any set of doctor. Will be all this set of doctor will be different. Okay, so that concludes my explanation about this principle of counting. Thank you.